Good afternoon, everyone. We are here virtually at the physics lab where Tom Campbell's experiments are being conducted by Fabian Kashnud with the assistance of David Chartrand as research. Barbad, what's new? Okay, uh, thank you, Dana. Hi, everyone. So I would like to show you one more time the setup here, what we have. So again, from here, you can see the, the laser and there's a half wave plate here, goes there and the BBO crystal. And on the other side, on the detector side, I have uh, two half wave plates, two beam splitters here, beam splitter cubes. These are filters, four filters, four collimators. All collimators are connected to, to the detector, which is here, which is the single photon counter. Okay, so what I'd like to show you today is that I'm going to send entangled photons through, through these two half wave plates. And then on the beam splitters, uh, the beam, uh, beam, uh, beam splitters, polarizing beam splitters will trans, uh, so will pass the horizontal polarizations to these two collimators. And then we reflect, we reflect the vertical polarization of the photons, photons with vertical polarization to these two on the sides. And I'm going to show you how we can do that and how they are, we can talk about the entangled photons. Okay, so then I'm going to... And maybe maybe Farbad, just yes. to help people understand, uh, can you name the the detectors? I think it's uh, A, pro, uh, A... Exactly, B. thank you. You're right, thank you, David. So we call this uh, A, a prime, B, B prime. A is the horizontal, B is the vertical polarization, B horizontal, B prime vertical. A and B for Alice and Bob in quantum as they call them. <laughs> and this is then later on will come, which is the double slit. Uh, unfortunately, I just broke it today and I have to uh, repair it, but uh, because I'm setting it up, uh, setting it up in a new setup, as you see here, I thought uh, make it better comparing with what we had before, but I just broke it because the glass, small glass material, and I'm going to repair it today. So I'll show you now the entanglement result. Okay, I'll turn the lights off. Run the experiment. Okay. Hit laser. Okay. Run. Okay. Uh, for some reason, now everything. Uh, okay, let's see what we can do. What? Now I'm going to rotate the half wave plates in, in front of the entangled photons and see what happens to the, the, the counts. So these are the counts of the photons, A, A prime, B and B prime. These are the ones that I just showed you the, in terms of the detector, in terms of the collimate, collimators and I have half wave plates in front of them by rotating the half wave plate, I can basically change the counts and changing from vertical to horizontal polarization and change, uh, see what are the, which two are entangled. So in this case, when you see A prime and B have the no more numbers of the photon. So this one, uh, a little change since I did the last experiment, uh, but it's okay. So if you see A prime and B, A prime and B show some coincidence numbers, which is changing. There's about like six, four, it keep changing about 10, six. So these are the actual entangled photons, which are 
like in in terms of uh, six five in 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 uh, in a, as 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 you see when it's updating with this uh, update time you can see what, how we can detect the, the entangled photons based on looking at the uh, coincidences which is how how they arrive the photons to detector a prime and b at the same time so when they arrive almost at the same time in a nanosecond time scale then we say they are entangled they are together they are a pair so now i'm going to rotate the first half wave plate in front of a and a prime and i if i rotate it so i change the from vertical to to horizontal and as you see here now a prime is going a going up a prime going down so now i have more horizontal and less vertical. So the, the horizontal uh, detector in front of the horizontal um, uh, in front of the beam splitter are detecting. Now I also, you can see that the coincidences are more for A and B because A, we have horizontal, B, we have horizontal on the other side of the, uh, uh, the beam because uh, we have on one side, we have the single uh, signal and the other side we have the idler beam which are the name of the beams of the uh, entangled photons okay. so that's how you see now it was changing so entangled uh, coincidences a and b now let me on the other side okay stopped now i have to now on the other side and b and b prime let me rotate the halfway plate and see how we can change the vertical and horizontal polarization of the other beam for the entangled pairs. Okay, so now it's also changing. Okay, so a little bit changed since what I did last time. Let me remove this. Now I think it's better result. Okay, now let me rotate this. Okay, now I'm rotating in front uh, uh, on B, B and B prime, and you see that the the vertical or horizontal are changing. So let's see, set it to vertical. So vertical means B prime. And as you see here now, we have A and B prime now. So on one side, we have the horizontal polarization on the other side, uh, vertical uh, polarization. So then the coincidences sh should be A and B prime. So we will look at the A and B prime pairs, which are about three, four is changing, keep changing very fast. Uh, so we can say that these are entangled photons, like we're detecting entangled photons, six of them, two of them, three, four, and keep changing. So, so now I think our setup in terms of entanglement side of it is, is okay, is acceptable. We can always make, uh, make them better and better. And then uh, the next step is I'm going to, to put the double slit in front of the one of the uh, one side of this uh, signal or the idler, which will be in front of the B and B prime probably. And then we'll continue the experiment. So that's what I wanted to talk about in terms of the update of the entanglement experiment, which is, I think is, is okay for now, for is acceptable so far, and we can continue to the next step. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I might add a little bit to that. For those listeners out there that have no idea what a half wave plate is, that's just the thing that, that rotates the polarization vector. It's a device that uh, takes in one polarization and outputs something different. And it's a little control that he can rotate that, that whole uh, filter and <clears throat> thereby change the amount of polarization that he has in any particular path. So that's what his... Uh, Half wave plate. It sounds like something you eat half waves on, but uh, that's uh, that's not it. So we have a few things yet to do. Uh, I think we're we're uh, going to need a a forty five degree uh, linear polarizer in front, and we're and we're going to need 
a, uh, a step motor that's going to move the, the uh, detector, uh, you know, linearly in, in a line in, in little steps and just move it a little bit, move it a little bit, collect data. And we keep doing that. And what we're doing is sampling the kind of results we get at various places. And we do that because that's a lot less expensive than buying some kind of detector that can look all of that area all at once. That's like, you know, a thousand times more expensive. So we, we sample the data, which means we have to run the experiment longer because we're only collecting data in one little delta X region at a time. And then we move it and collect a little more in a different delta X region and so on. So we have that to put in and then we have a, well, a calcite crystal or, a, or another beam splitter that's going to separate uh, you know, polarization paths at the end. And we'll be ready to do that first experiment. So we're, we're, getting, we're getting closer to that now. And what Farbot has just demonstrated to you is that we have the basic core of the experiment set up and working. We're generating, we're generating uh, entangled particles and we can see that all of the variations are the way they should be. You know, you change this a little bit, then that should go down. You change that a little bit, this should go up. Mm -hmm. So all of these are just tests to show that it is reacting the way it should react. And so that's, the, that's kind of the verification that the experiment is set up right. And you notice the, the entangled particles that we actually measured in a coincidence gate that's just a few nano uh, seconds wide that they were in the you know the two three four five six kind of category which is not bad that, at all you know that that will run up particles pretty well we're going to have that data we'll probably take that data for you know at that particular delta x for as long as we need to to accumulate enough particles that will give us a good display you know in our final output so if we even get you know one a second that means we only need to run it for, you know, what, 60 seconds. That's only a minute, you know, and we'll get 60 points there. So then we move to the next, the next piece. So higher rates would be nicer because the experiment would go faster, but we can do the experiment even with just a few. So, and as, as far about juggles this equipment and aligns it and, and hones it and perfects it, those numbers will go up. You know, he, he just, he actually didn't know that Donna was coming today and we were going to show all this. So we kind of caught him uh, unawares of any of that. So he wasn't real prepared. And uh, <clears throat> so you see it just the way it is, folks. This is, this is not made up. You know, it's just happened. But uh, I have seen it where we were, where those, uh, those accounts, those accounts that are in that, that gate, or more like 10 or 12, you know, eight or 15 or, you know, We've, we've seen higher counts and it's just a matter of getting everything adjusted just right so that we optimize, you know, the experiment. So we'll probably be more in the, you know, in the five, 10, 15 counts for those entangled particles, even though what we saw today was, you know, twos and threes and fours and occasionally sixes and that sort of thing. Because you notice that the other counters that we didn't expect to see things in those typically stay between zeros and ones. Every once in a while, every four or five minutes, a two might show up, but most of the time they're zeros and ones, which is basically noise in the system. So if you get anything above the noise, then that's real signal. You know, that's, that's information that you can take to the bank and make part of your results. So even at this on the fly, Farbod did demonstrate that we have enough information to do the experiment even without it being tuned up. So, so uh, you know, I'm very encouraged that we're fairly close to getting the first experiment done. We've got just a couple of little technical pieces to, to do yet. Mostly now it's the motor and, and getting everything aligned perfectly and that sort of thing. And then getting our setup made so that we can be taking data for hours at a time as we move from this Delta X to the next Delta X and so on. Everything has to stay stable. Everything has to not move. You know, everything has to stay exactly the way it is for, you know, maybe, you know, half a day or something before we collect enough data that we could have something to display. And that's a challenge in itself. You know, it's really hard to have things. I mean, when we talk about alignment, we talk about moving something, moving you know, a, a, a thousandth of a, 
of a meter or something and it messes things up or rotating at a you know hundredth of a degree so we you have to be really careful about uh, vibrations and other things once we start taking data and so we're not we're not uh, we're not there yet but we're getting <laughs> we're getting closer and closer so that's kind of the that's sort of the report david do you have uh, anything to add to that I think it's uh, pretty complete, uh, and I'm really excited for the following weeks. Uh, we're closer and closer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all. Barbara, that was a wonderful demonstration. To me, that was very exciting. Um, thank you, Tom. Thank you, David. Uh, Tom Center for the Unification of Science and Consciousness on Facebook uh, is going to have this post as soon as we, we can get it out there. And QSAC.org will have the update as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.